Hi everyone, welcome to the KOps channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be taking a look at builders. We're going to be building our builders from scratch. We have been using Lombok so far, but a couple of people asked me what's actually happening there uh, when you create a builder, what does Lombok do? In Lombok, a lot of magic, right? Uh, you also might be working on a, on a language that does not have like a Lombok uh, library. So having that kind of knowledge can help you out to build your own if you need it, right? So uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos. I'm also going to be posting the links for the previous ones. And let's start. So what we're going to be doing in, in, the, in the next videos is the store part of the Swagger store. And this is where you're going to be doing order, right? And for doing order, we have this contract here. We have a couple of integers. We have, uh, we have three integers, two strings, and a Boolean value. So uh, we're going to be mapping those right now, right? So what for, for having an executable, I'm going to create the, the store feature. Right, with some random, doesn't really matter. I just want to as an executable store step definitions. I'm going to refactor to the correct place. Awesome. Now we have our executable. So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be create the domain, right? So far we have been doing this way using Lombok. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to create a new store class, right? And I already have the store contract here mapped so we don't lose much time. Three integers, two string and one Boolean. Uh, so what I can do here, I'm going to be using Lombok in this one, but not in the builder itself, right? So, and I'm going to do this. Just by doing this, I can I can already create my store. I can come here, I can say store, store one, new store. Right. I can pass all the values in my constructor or I can create my store and I can do store one dot set pet ID two store one set ID thirty and so on and so forth right but then I'm I'll be missing the the default values I'll I'll be missing a couple of functionalities and I do not want to put these functionalities here on my on my store so that's why we have builders right. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to create a package called builders in the domain, because this is going to be the builders for the domain. And I'm going to call it store builder. This one needs to have the same attributes as the class that I'm going to be creating, building. Right, but I'm not going to be using any long block here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a kind of like a set method, but it's not a set method because it's the, the set, the, the, the method that I'm going to be creating is going to be returning the class itself. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a public store builder. This is going to be returning a store builder. And I'm going to call it with ID because this is the method that's going to change the ID. This is going to receive an integer ID, and I can say this ID is going to be attributed to ID. ID is going to be attributed to ID. So this ID is referencing this one here, and the and the ID here is going to be is referencing the ID in the parameter, right? And now what I can do, I am going to do return this. The fact that I return the own store builder is going to enable me to do chain calls, right? So I can do another one here, public store builder with pet ID. 
I'm going to receive a pet ID as parameter and I'm going to do pet ID, pet ID, return this. Great. So I'm, I'm going to return once I finish everything. Cool. So I finished everything. You're going to see that they look pretty much the same, similar, right? So we have an if, a with method that's going to be returning the, the value. So let's try this out. Returning the class itself. So instead of doing this, now I can say that the store one is going to be a new store builder. And now I can do my chain, right? But I, I did forget about uh, how do I build this, right? So I'm not building the store. There is only store builder here. So what I need to do is I need to create a method called uh, build that is going to create a store. And I'm going to call build. And this one is going to return a new store. And I pass the value here. So this is what I'm going to be doing. So let me just comp copy everything here. Great. So now I can go back here can I, and I can do with quantity one with uh, status complete build. And I can also break the lines so it's readable. I'm going to put something, anything here just so I can have a break line. And I'm going to execute my store in debug mode. Here, execute again. There you go. Great. So now we have zero value, have quantity one, have complete and new values and false values. Right? Because we don't have the full ones. It, it only populated whatever I put it here. Right. And in our builder we have been using, we have the default values. So let's create the default values right now. So what I can do also is I can create a method called reset a void method and I'm going to give a name of reset and this is going to reset the values to my default values. So ID, I'm going to say that I want it to have an ID of five. My pet ID is going to be 22. The quantity, I want the quantity, the default quantity, I don't know, 10. The shipping date, I want 20 February, 2021. The status, the status is approved. And the complete, I'm going to say true. Cool. So where do I call my reset, right? We already been calling the constructor of this because we are doing new store builder. So I can just change my builder, right? Store builder. And here in my constructor, my default constructor, I can call the reset. So when I do new store builder, it's going to reset all the values and my width is going to change whatever the ones that I want. So let's test it out, this out. So I'm going to uh, create the store, store one is going to be store builder, build. The store two, I'm going to say I want it with with ID and I want ID nine. 
I want with pet ID, I want with pet ID 99, and I want with ship date. I want today, 11 January 2021, and the quantity 100 pets. I'm building a farm. <laughs> cool. So, the other one, the store three, I want just, uh, let's see, I want the pet ID to be 88. The quantity, I just want 50. The status, I'm going to say incomplete and not the shipping date. And the last one, I want the default again. So I'm going to debug again. So now we have the default value, which is 5, 22, and 10. 5, 22, 10, 20, February approved. We have the non default one, 999, 100, uh, today complete and true. We have this one just changing the pet ID 88, the quantity 50 and the incomplete status, and you have the store four, which is a default one, 5, 22, 10, 20, Feb, uh, 20 uh, February, 2021, right? So you can see that we already were able to create our builder the way that we have our functionality so far, right? But the thing is, you can see that Lombok helps you a lot because if you take a look at what we did in the user, for, for example, you have the so let me go to the pet has more things right you have the constructor we have the data for the get and setters but we just had to put the builder here and it created the builder for us right and if you want the default value this is what you want to do you need to put the builder default and the value for that default and voila you have everything that you needed for that builder in our case we had to create the star class we had to create the builder class and our builder class has a lot of code. It's simple code, but it's still a lot of code, almost 17 lines of code, which is a lot, right? So Lombok, you can see that Lombok helps you a lot, right? So, but I'm going to leave like this. So we, we, we're going to be using this store builder that we created as part of our, the rest of the code. So we, you have an example, so you can follow up, right? So thank you for watching. If you like, give the thumbs up and it's really important that you do. That's how the channel can keep growing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos. And I'm going to be watching you, or I'm going to be seeing you on next video. Thank you.